because last time we had said we were going to do something somewhat different today. I mean, we do those once in a while, continuous texts rather than just the um, just the uh, the the example sentences in Evo or Zatzinger or wherever I take them from. So this time it's a complete text because we had a few sentences there from the last time. It was uh, the testament of um, two people that lived during the rule of Ramses the Eleventh. So that's the end of the Ramesides, about a hundred years after our Horus and Seth text, and probably a generation or so, if that much, before Venomoon. Could actually be, I mean, just just a few years before Venomoon's travels, whether real or fictional. So we're basically the, the splendor of Ramses the second and the all the fights of Ramses the third this is over um Egypt is still one but it's soon going to be going to be split um however none of that is this really the concern of this testament hey Rebecca this is essentially Hi. two people trying to straighten out how they uh, want their um their possessions to be distributed after uh after their demise. <laughs> So it's a testament in will. Um, and since we had that fun donkey sentence in there the last time, I thought, let's take a look at the whole thing together. Uh, it's going to be a longer text. On the other hand, though, grammatically, most of it is pretty straightforward. So I would say, why don't we just try to go through it and see how far we get? And that can definitely help with with vocabulary here. Um, I'm not sure if anybody had a chance to look at it. So hieratic text. Ramicide, hieratic, but we'll be working from the the um, the hieroglyphic transcription. Uh, it's also known as the adoption papyrus. It's in the Ashmolean. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Ashmolean, Ashmolean. Um, Ashmolean. Um, thank you. <laughs> Something did sound a bit wrong. Ashmolean Museum. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, I would say let's just go into it. Anybody want to take the beginning of it? Um, I don't know, the first one, one and a half lines, and I'll get my my annotation tool ready. Are we reading from right to left or left to right? From right to left. Um, it's in the, the original, uh, original configuration. And oh, how do I do this? Hang on. Is it, is it too small if I zoom out? Let me see. Be good to make it a teeny bit bigger. Like this? Is that too tiny? Well, do we need to see the hieratic or, or, or not? We don't. And I was thinking we could do one of two things. Either I zoom in and I type over it. That's one option. So I could just try to squeeze the... Yeah, zooming in is fine. Um... Okay, let me do that. And let's try. What do we have? Beginning shouldn't be too hard. Um, how would any official document typically start? With a date. That's right. And hang on, you're off screen, but yeah. So then want to try the date? Yeah, I'm not sure the correct pronunciation of that first symbol. <laughs> is it is it ter or is it... Yeah. Something? I'm then I'm then all right for a bit after that. There's a lot of discussion what it is supposed to be. I mean, the the sign by itself would be Renpet or in Coptic oh, Renpe, yeah. uh, but then when it's combined with this little circle, um, there's several different readings proposed by different scholars. Nevu Chesped, regnal year. I'm just going to run with this one. Uh, just be aware that some authors will very vehemently claim that it has, is to be read a different way, but. I'll, I'll go with Nevoe because that's our overall course. So, yeah, it's... In that, case, it's in that case, I don't feel worried about being confused by it. You shouldn't because uh, uh, there's at least four different official it, ways out there. <laughs> well, then it's Abed 3. That's right. Shemu. Uh, Shemu. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's day 20. And I forget what the abbreviation for day and dates is. Just like in Coptic, interestingly, it's Su. Uh, Su Jute. Uh, or Jude, um, 20. I'll not spell it out at this time, but uh, yeah, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, him, cool. And uh, the, um, oh, what do you call it? Under the, under the person, under the, 
Yeah. Government. And the person, majesty, person. Majesty. Sorry, Alan says incarnation, which still sounds weird to me. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Then the next bit, I think the next, the, the parrot is part of the majesty, isn't it? Uh, this part here? Or you mean the... No, oh, no, no, no. The yeah, the, the parrot is part of the majesty, also lovingly referred to as a bird on a stick. Um, yeah, but, that's yeah. the one. That's the one. Um, and then you've got... Well, I would expect to see a Nessu bit. Yeah. I'm, I'm all right with the bit. I'm not sure about the Nessu, but... Uh, yeah, he... he what it is. He left out the bit. I mean, not the bit, but a bit of the bit. So, yeah. <laughs> Can I... Yeah. Adjust this here somehow, bear with me. Yay! Okay. Yeah. Well, I've learned then something. you've got the name of the king. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's Ram, well, it's Ray Moses. Mm -hmm. Hau, or Hau. Mm -hmm. Um, um, what was it? That's right. Oh, was it? Mm -hmm. That's right. Was it? Was it? Ah, uh, was it? Mm hmm. Um, hmm. Yeah. We've got another parrot, another bird on a stick. Do you, I mean, you what, like, what it is, is um, the name of the town. Yeah, it, it closes out the name. Um, well, and then you've got An Anquijar Seneb. That's right. Perfect. And maybe go a little bit further. Okay, and then it's Murray Iman, beloved. Uh, oh well, Murray Iman is part of his name, isn't it? Beloved. Uh, of it's like an epithet. Um, it's not yeah. really part of the name, but oh, is it? Oh, you're right. It is part. Some I of the Ramesides. Some of the Ramesides yeah. have it inside the cartouche. Um, yeah. Good question. I'm not completely sure. Maybe, maybe you maybe oh, could be spot on. Mm. Yeah, and there isn't a left hand end to the cartouche, right. which makes it a bit tricky. Mm -hmm. But That's it's true. beloved of Iman. Mm -hmm. um, uh, God, God Netcha, mm -hmm. Heka Yunu. Perfect. Heka Yunu. The next bit. Can I stop there because it's getting more difficult? <laughs> <laughs> you could maybe stop here. Um, ah. Okay. Just to finish uh, off the line. Well, we, uh, we get another Anquijar Seneb, mm -hmm. D Ank. The Anik, yeah. The Anik. Then maybe the last uh, two words here. Yeah. Jet. Uh, Nehaha. Nehihi. Nehoho. <laughs> yeah. Eternity. Jet. Uh, Inik. Uh, I'm just going to say Inik because that's what it is in, Copi in Coptic. Um, so. All right. I'm coming at it from Middle Egyptian. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay, perfect. Great job. So, quick translation into English. I think you did it sort of on the fly already. Well, but... I sort of did it as you go. So, it, it's it's month three of Shamu. I don't know. I mean, it's it's. I see that's translated as summer in one of the versions. Right, and it's still. Uh, I think it's Shom in in Coptic, if I'm not mistaken. So that actually lives on, uh, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh under the incarnation of the king, uh, Ramaz Ramazes. Um, I don't know how to translate the next bit of the name. Uh, Kao's oh. appearance. Right. And where does he appear? He appears in, um, oh, what's, what's, what's words read? What's uh, it? Uh, Thebes. Um, Thebes. Okay, Thebes. thank you. The old name for Thebes, uh, yeah. also also called, of course, uh, the city, simply in, in in the New Kingdom. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm getting rusty. Mm -hmm. No worries. Uh, and, then I, 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 mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And may may he live mm, strong and happy, strong and healthy, <laughs> beloved of Iman, uh, God, ruler of. The other place, so you knew. <laughs> Isn't that Heliopolis, if I'm not mistaken? On mm -hmm. Heliopolis, so rule of Heliopolis. So one in the south, Heliopolis. one in the north. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's still, he still get the polite bit after that. And then given life uh, eternally forever. Forever and ever. Indeed. Perfect. 
Great job. So yeah, and the name here actually, uh, Hao M. Waset, he who appears in, in Waset or in, in Thebes, uh, also Ha M. Was, uh, which is a rather famous name. You'll find that as soon as you get to to Demotic, there's a, uh, there are famous tales around Setna Ha M. Was, uh, that all refers to an earlier Ramesside offspring. Um, for example, one or two of the sons of, of Ramses II are also Chaim Basit. Uh, so it's a popular name, I guess, in that in that in that dynasty. Um, but in this case, we're talking about uh, Ramses XI, if I'm not all mistaken. So yeah, great start. Okay, so we have our date, right? We're in the... Oh, we missed something. Hesbet. Not any Hesbet, but Hesbet... There's a little stroke missing. It's Chespedwa. It's the first year of um, of Chaim Baset, of Ramses XI. So year one, uh, month three. Okay, great. Great job. All right. Who wants the next one? Um, probably have to go a little bit smaller so we see the whole thing. So starts over here. I'll go. Where All is right. it? Uh, Thank you. It's here. Ah, boom. See it. All right. So we have um so we have Heru. Mm -hmm. And then we have Ben. Mm -hmm. Oh Heru Heru Ben Esramech. Is that right? Yeah, it looks like Remech. It looks like Remech, but it's actually a yeah. verb. Uh the verb is said. In Coptic, uh, sor. Oh, that's a man with a hand to his mouth. Okay, yeah. Right. Ser. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, um, chau. Mm -hmm. Ni, nature. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ben. Uh huh. And this is shepes. That's right. Shepes. Ni. Uh huh. Amun. That's right. Oh, I Yemen, Yemen. Let me move this out the way. All right. Then we have. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. No, want to do this one first or continue? Either way is fine. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That, that was a short one. So that's uh. And then we have UF. Okay, hang on. Uh, trying my best here. UF, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. UF, and we have um, UF, aha, kau. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And now I guess I need to move a little bit. Uh... That's the rest of the, oh, what's the, what, what are we in with? Kau, wait. Down here. Yep, kau, and this is a uh, wed, wednu. Mm -hmm. A wedding, yeah. Ni yeah. Amun, yeah. That's it. Let me zoom out a bit. This one is deceptively simple. There's nothing strange here, grammar-wise. Just need to figure out what exactly is happening here. It's nothing too crazy, though. All right, so we have... Is there a ray after um, Heru? Is there a ray after Heru? This one here? It's just part of the word. word. It's just part of the word oh, day. Oh, it's a determinative? Mm -hmm. oh, okay, got it. Cool, thanks. So what do you think happens here? All right, so let's see. You can start the way here. So we have, so I guess on so this day, mm -hmm. um, now the verb, I don't know, sir, Siret. I think Something it's with speaking, I guess. <laughs> yeah, to pro proclaim, if I'm not mistaken. Let me take a look. Yeah, so yeah. That's what it was. Um, Aurelia, is the blue under the correct line? I'm a bit confused. No, the blue is supposed to be here, just for some reason I can't get there because oh, it's it's you, maybe maybe you shrunk it. I don't know. Make it big bigger, then it might go up. Let's do oh, this. Perfect. Better? Well done. Yes, thank you. Sorry, it's just no, no worries. Mm-hmm. All right, so we have, um, oh, there it is. Okay, this card. Okay, so we have, uh, so, um, so proclaiming, I guess, proclaiming this day the beautiful appearance of this God or this nature 
um, mm-hmm. Shepes, Shepes, uh, is, that, is it Noble? Can yeah, Noble, Shepes? right? Mm-hmm. This is no, this noble god of Amun, of or, or Netter. You said or? Uh, or, or what else could it be? It could be of Amun, or it could be or oh, two. Um, fits better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To Amun. Two. Mm-hmm. To Amun. Mm-hmm. Let me move this out the way. All right. All right. So then we have um, lost it again. There we go. So he stands, or he appears, mm-hmm. or he rises in. He rises in his glorious appearance, or he comes in his glorious appearance. Actually, it may be there may be a mental comma in between. Um, so it may be this, this, and this. And I'm going to help a bit. You have aha, presumably. Mm-hmm. He's appearing. In, glo- in glory or in his brilliance? Yeah, um, maybe, maybe. And oh, the wedding. The wedding is to offer, like to present offerings to somebody. So he appears in his appearance offering to Amun. That's right. And what comes after that? Oh, oh we didn't go farther, further, did we? Right. Yeah, we stopped. Okay. And that's really what it is. You had it. So on this day, proclamation of the appearance of this uh, noble god, I think you said, uh, to Amun. Um, so basically, he's being announced to Amun, namely who? Ramses. Ramses, the the new king. Remember, this is this is his first year. Um, uh, you have um, him standing, um, appearing, and offering to Amun. So apparently that's the that's a bigger big event of the day that's happening. Um, imagine it like I don't want to say coronation day or something because I'm being being uh, anachronistic here or I'm not sure if I get the details right. But imagine it sort of like that. Something uh, basically that's that's the big event that happened on on set day uh, as a backdrop to everything else that's going to happen in this text. But um, just uh, an extra tidbit of uh, what happened right now. Makes sense so far? I had a question about, about the verb aha. Yeah, what about so it? Is, so is aha, is it being used it kind of almost kind of like an, an auxiliary where, right, it literally means he stands or rise, but um, yeah, that's he a appears question. or he is appearing. Or, should, a, or should we translate aha? Or should, or should we translate it here? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, that's why I put those comma commata here, but it is kind of weird mm. um, because... I kind of like that better, but then it would need, wouldn't it need some kind of preposition or something? If you wanted to say standing in his, in his appearance or glory or the like, I would like to see an M there in between the aha and the next verb. So I'm not sure, but it's a, it's a really good question. We saw something I mean, but it, like it makes sense, though, even if you translate it literally, it makes sense still. We saw something like this in Horace and Seth, I think, when Seth stood pregnant remember that Mm -hmm. after the whole incident with the lettuces um and they used that it was like an auxiliary verb to like to become pregnant to fault he stood pregnant so maybe it is maybe you're right chris that it is some sort of auxiliary and and it may be i mean it may be you're right aha is definitely on its way to being an auxiliary oh it is one already so you're taking the house sort of like some kind of stative or something of that that nature. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, possibly. Uh, so, can could you use the word established? Um, aha. Yeah, to stand to be established. Like you would use men for that. Yeah, some men or men. Uh, there is a word for this, but I'm not going to say categorically no. Maybe would really want to see a few more sentences there if this is being used anywhere. Uh, Ellie had it simply as he stood up or he arose. Let's see what he says. Si levo a parve e con pio ferte. Um, he rose up, appeared, and uh, provided offerings to Amun. But uh, I hear what you guys are saying. It could be. Maybe this is a compound compound expression because he stood up is kind of kind of weird, right? <laughs> um, I'll leave that as a question mark. I don't know. Uh, what did Gardner have? Let me take a quick look. 
then he stood or then he appeared because sometimes they use aha as a then right aha aha yes aha and and we're going to see that in a moment it's definitely in this text um, well, I, don't see, I don't see the verb for making the offerings uh that's the wedding oh that's a verb is it that's a verb and i think oh, it's still, right. i think it's still there in coptic a uh, warden warden <laughs> i had to look this one up i didn't know that one but uh, it does exist um, so yeah, that's that's to make offerings. Is and this that, referring to an event in the religious uh, calendar that the Egyptians used, like uh, to, that it helps to kind of work with the the date to set the scene? Is that why this uh, being mentioned? Say that again. I'm sorry, I missed it. Oh, sorry. Uh, is this um, uh, festival date being met, that's being mentioned? Is this part of the Egyptian religious calendar that relates to the? Um, sort of dating the scene of like you have the actual date at the beginning of the letter or being at the proclamation then you have like the actual sort of feast day essentially that in the Egyptian religious calendar is that why this is being included like content wise or uh, that's a really interesting question so one interpretation I've read about that is I mean what follows is a will right um, so you could just have gone with the date and be done with it why do you feel the need to mention that it happened on inauguration day or coronation day or whatever um, one way to interpret that could be to say hey to give extra emphasis extra formality to whatever comes after because you're right um, in principle it would have been good enough to just say uh, year one month three day 20 um, and in front of the following witnesses that that would have done uh, that would have been enough right so the only hypothesis I've read is that that made some sense to me was for extra emphasis uh, or to commemorate the day or whatnot um, that would be it. Uh, I, I, I have another. I have another theory, which is the scribes or the lawyers were paid by the word. That makes yeah. sense. Paid by the glyph. That that makes actually a lot of sense when you think about it. Okay. Um, I, I just took a quick look at what uh, what what Gardner said, and then we can move on. He basically had um, on this day proclamation to our moon of the shining forth, in other words, appearance of this noble god. He arising and shining forth and making offering to our moon. Um, in other words, announcement to Amun of Kadnak of the king's ascension, whereupon he proceeded to make offerings to the god. So he they all they all take it as, as sequential. But again, I, I think the idea with a, a an auxiliary is kind of interesting. Um, I'd say though, let, let's move on a little bit um, because I'm not sure we're going to resolve that one uh, finally. But yeah. Great start so far. Let's go on a little bit. So what we had is we had offerings to our moon, and then. And we just talked about Acha in as an introduction for for um like the consecutive consecutive verb form. And then this happened in a narrative. So um what happened next? I could try it if you want. All right, um, awesome. Mm -hmm. Go for it. So uh we're at um uh Aha and Iri uh Neb Nefer. Mm -hmm. Um or nefer, uh, probably neferi, um, and pai, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, pai, and then hab, no, ha, uh, hai met. Hai, sure just hai, is. hai. Hai, um, hai? Do you, okay. Do you know what hai means? I don't. Husband, uh, still means Husband, the same okay, thing. Okay, that's why it has a determinative there. Okay. That's right. Uh, and then, uh, then uh, zechau, which is different now, right? Or is it still zechau for scribe? It could be scribe. However, when it's scribe, it doesn't have the little roll at the end. Uh, when it has the roll, oh, so it's dash. It, it refers to a document, basically. Uh, so okay, and we have no idea how it's pronounced, unfortunately, because uh, zechau, the the scribe, lives on as sach, teacher in Coptic, and right. to write lives on as eschai. Um, but the document, I think, does mm. not live on. There's a Bohairic word, uh, which may, however, come from from a different different root, unfortunately. So it's a little bit of a, a question mark. Um, so oh. let's leave it at Zechau. So here. is there a standard for transliterating it, or do you just put Zechau? Uh, I just put Zechau. Let me see what the other guys here do real quick. Um, That's ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Ellie puts the good old Sesh. Um, sesh, yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking. I'll just leave it the way it is. There's a lot of discussion when exactly what is applicable. I'll... So it's kind of like a Renpet, 
and um versus uh Hesped. So correct, okay. correct, kinda. Mm -hmm. cool. Okay. Um and then uh Sesh um and is it plural or is uh with the three strokes? Um or that's why I put the W in parentheses. Yeah, let probably probably singular from context. Um Okay. Uh, so then na uh, um oh man, I always forget this one. Uh, this is For, uh, um Shemai, uh, that is a songstress in this case, uh, a singer. Okay, um, cool. Cool. Uh, what did you make out of these? We two? know it's feminine. Uh, I was saying na. Oh, it should be ni actually. That sounds um, good. Okay, ni. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shemai. Okay, I think. Shemai. And we're continuing. And Not any kind of sure, singer, uh, but she's a singer of. Ken Setesh or um. Right. And then, na, where do you want to keep going? Let's see. Let's go to uh, here. Okay. Uh, so, na, uh, neferu. Neferu. Na, nefer. Mm -hmm. All right. Nefer. Okay. Perfect. What do you make out of it? Okay. Uh, so, this is a, this is an auxiliary with ear, with a, a with ahi, um, or aha. Oh no, it's uh, eerie end. So we uh, we stand. Uh, you're over here. We establish. Um, let me help a bit. Aha n is just yeah, um, sorry. like sort of like a verb form. In it's an, it's a part of a comp composite verb form. So uh, you could translate it with n then. Um, okay. So you find that a lot, like in the Horus and Sesh text. It's all kind over. of like when in kind of. Exactly, very much like Wernin. There's like a small okay. difference between okay. Wernin and Aha in, but uh, it's basically okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, and then uh, the uh, uh, the Lord, the good, the Lord, goodness, or that's, that's actually his name. Uh, it's literally the oh, the, Nep for Neb. Uh, Nep Nefer is his name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that the guy's okay. mm -hmm, the guy's name, Nep Nefer. Okay, Neb Nefer. Um, uh, this. Um, pi is this, and then pi. And when it has Ooh, a little. Sorry, no. When it has a little. Yeah, it's me suffix phone of on. mine. mine. This mm -hmm. to me. Uh, um, Hmm. If you were to say, for example, uh, pi eshime or eshimit, what would it mean? Uh, that wouldn't be pi. That would be tai. Tai eshimit. Hmm. Oh, is it like um like uh the, like my wife or um mm -hmm. correct this wife to me? It's sort of like a dative. Yeah, um, but it's it's really the way how you it's a the possessive article um just like a call. Okay. Um, okay, uh, so it could just be like my, um, uh, I, my, uh, husband. No, that's right. Mm -hmm. So, Nepnefa, Pai Hai, my husband. Um, and what did he do? My he, husband. He iri zecha. Uh, he wrote, um, so, yeah. or like he made a letter, a document. So, he wrote, mm -hmm. um, to me, mm -hmm. uh, songstress. Mm -hmm. Of, um, of Seth, uh, or of Sotesh, um, mm -hmm. the good, uh, or the good things, plural. Uh, I should have helped there. Nanefa is the name of the wife. Uh, later oh, in the document, okay. the name changes to Ren Nefer for completely They're the Nefer family. <laughs> it seems like it. Oh, huh? Just kidding. Okay, <laughs> that's a good point. You're right. Like, right. thank like, you for your patience with that. Like, like Michael and Michaela or something. So you're right. They have yeah, both exactly. of Nefer in their name for whatever reason. So Neb Nefer, right. uh, the husband of Na Nefer. We got Great. it. Perfect. So we're zooming out from the big international events in, in Thebes, where, where um, Raptors the Eleventh is being being uh, announced to Amun, and we're going back to, to the private affairs here, namely, uh, my husband, Neb Nefer, made a, a writ for me, um, the songsters of Sutech, or Seth, uh, Nanefer. Okay, good, good job. Well done.
All right. Um, so let's continue a little bit because now we have the preliminaries out of the way. The interesting question is what exactly did you make a red about? Um, so we are down here and I'm taking suggestions. Go. All right. Um, hang on. Almost if I can ever find. Ben, the Neffer family. That's funny. The Neffer family. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. And, Mr. Mrs. Mrs. and Mrs. Neffer. Mrs. Right, right. And later she changes name. Um, a bit further down the text, she becomes Ren Neffer. And I checked the hieratic. It's not like the R is kind of squishy and you go like, oh, maybe we misread this before. But it seems to change like from one sentence to the next. So I don't know if she had a change of I heart. thought you were going to make a Coptic joke and say later they changed their name to Nofri or Nofri or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm not sure what's up with that. I mean, it's clearly one contiguous text, and it's talking about the same mm -hmm. events. So just a heads up, when you later see Ren Neffer, it seems to be the same person. And why she changed his name is not clear to me. Um, it could just be a scribal error? That seems crazy. We can we can look at it. It, it. it occurs twice. Both occur twice. So I don't think it's an error. But there is, I think there may be a few years in between. So we'll get there. Um <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if I may, I, I read once where the term Ren Nefer was used by the Egyptians to um, allude to like a like a nickname almost yeah. um, your 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 oh. Ren Nefer name. So it, it technically wasn't your name, but it was like a you know like my guy or my people. You my know, sweet, like a like a, a pet my, name. My name. sweetie. <laughs> Isn't the word Ren just name, so that would just yes. be good name, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, Ren oh. Nefer. Maybe that's the answer. I, I've not seen anybody comment on that. It's just basically everybody writes, and I say everybody I probably read about four or five articles on this one, just uh, constatates that it changes and that um, uh, that there are multiple spellings of the name. But I like your proposal. Maybe maybe that makes more sense. Like yeah. uh, Real quick, um, it, it came up because someone was questioning whether or not, um, I forgot one of the kings, his name was um, Peppy Kim, and then his brother was named... Something the red and his was something the black, and it was saying how that's that's the Ren Nefer name. Oh wow! Okay, I'll have to read up on that. That does sound like a nickname. That's really cool. That is cool. Yeah, Peppy Kim and his brother was called Desher something, and they had these colors attached to their name, and it was saying that it's not that's not that the brother is red and mm -hmm. not that he is black, but it's kind of like a you know again like a nickname. Mm. Got it. Fascinating. Cool. Okay, no, another avenue too. to look into. But for the moment, she's still still Tanefer. <laughs> so let's see what uh, and Nanefer, not Tanefer. Sorry, Nanefer. Uh, or Na in Nefer? No, I'm actually seeing the plural strokes here. Ah, I think that's just because it's Na. Yeah, it could be. Huh? Could just be the spelling. In any case, what uh, what did he actually um, write yes. on her? Okay, behalf? so Uf Irat. Mm -hmm. Uf her Irat. Maybe? Question mark? Come could back to it. Her, or could be could be uh, I'm not sure which one it is, but it could mm. be either of those. Yeah. It has to be one uh, of those. Yeah. yeah. Um an F and Sherry. And Sherry, yeah. Uh is this B1 a suffix pronoun or a determinative? Um hey, hey, I'll just say it's a it's a determinative. Uh okay. it's a good question. Um, UF, Zahau, any? UF, Zahau, any? Yeah. Um, and Pa, Saut? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just say Saut, but you're right, there is an, okay. there's an R somewhere in there, which I think that doesn't belong. That's by literal, that little toilet paper roll on the holder. Yes, that one. I thought it was a catapult. But like I'm very good at identifying hieroglyphs. I don't know if you guys know, but that's clearly toilet paper on. Now I can like unsee a weird it. little switch on top, so you can reverse the direction. Of the right. Anyway. I always thought it was a switch, but okay, now it's a toilet paper. <laughs> it's got a switch on top, but yeah, that's that's toilet paper. Um. Okay. Anyway, Neb. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you Ben and F. Uh, Shetty. Mm -hmm. Oops. Shetty. Uh, let's continue until here, maybe. 
Okay. Uh, Shetty, uh, Shetty, uh, you, wait, what? This, this belongs to Shetty. Uh, you can tell by the... Ah, uh, uh, ha, 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 yeah, yeah. Um, okay. uh, Erharu, Er, Inak. Yeah, so that one is a really weird one. Well, we'll need to talk about that. But yeah, mm -hmm. the rest of the sentence is fairly straightforward. But that last part okay, is so about... Sorry, does Ch say Sherry twice? It does Shetty. say Sherry twice somewhere, yes. Um, here and here, yeah. No, I mean, ju ju over the break of the line, so there's Sher and the... At the end of oh, the yeah, last yeah, line. you're right, you're right, you're right. Shetty, Shetty, Shetty. There's male and female, I guess. Sons and daughters. Oh, Shetty, you're right. Shetty. Oops. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank right. you for pointing that out. I, yeah. yeah good catch. No problem. Yeah. I was confused. Great catch. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, That's why I was so confused by the word because it felt it, overly long. That's because it was two bit. words. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, okay, so mm -hmm. uh, he. Um, you know what? I'll take the R out. I think you're right about her. That makes more sense. Mm -hmm. uh, he made for himself um, a child, a daughter. Made uh, for himself a child. A daughter, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Made for himself a daughter. Um, and he wrote, I guess, for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know what suit is. A suit is um, a special form of the... It's a, it's, a, it's a possessive pronoun that you can put after, um, after a noun. Um, for example, uh, Pairome suit, this man of his. Um, you can also nominalize it, um, in the which case it mean that belonging would mean that belonging to him. Okay, that, that should give you a clue what pasut pasut nip got it would be. So, um, for me, um, uh, his possessions then all his possessions. Correct, everything that belonged so, to him, all his possessions. Perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you Ben and F, uh, you Ben and F Shetty did not. He did not have a son or daughter. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Erheru is except. Except. Mm -hmm. Enoch. I, I mean, clearly it says aside from me, but I don't understand Enoch here. No, this is really weird. So it's it's in in uh, Chani Gwal, late Egyptian grammar, that er plus. Um, Plus independent pronoun supposedly according to Chani Gora, um, like er plus suffix pronoun. Uh, however, the two citations given are both from this text, so, so that's a little bit of a circular, right? I mean, it clearly means um, um, apart from me. But how this works grammatically, it should be eri, right, or later Coptic eroi. Um, so how that became er inek, I really don't know. Uh, it's going to appear one more time later. So it could be, possibly, I'm throwing that out, my personal speculation, it could be re and then comma inek with like inek to emphasize what came before because sometimes you see that or often you see that where they use the independent pronoun to emphasize something that was said before. But um, it is kind of striking that this happens twice in this text, that they have a preposition followed right away by by a demonstrative, uh, demonstrative, by an independent pronoun. But the meaning is definitely what you said, namely, apart from me. And let's strike it up to some kind of weird grammatical thing. Now, talking about weird grammatical things, most of this made perfect sense, right? You said, and he made a writ for me uh, of all his possessions, um, not having any sons or daughters apart from me. But then something about the first part, he made himself a daughter. There's something missing here. Um, and what's missing is probably in here. He may he made 
himself what if there was a if there was an an eye here oh he made me that's it but that's at least how he stuff. seems to be taking yeah. it because that fits to the rest so that's mm -hmm. where it gets interesting so this is the wife speaking she says and he made me his daughter mm -hmm. talking about her own yeah. husband um, that is, I would say, somewhat unusual, <laughs> not an everyday occurrence. So if you think about it, this is a testament in will. And essentially what the husband is just doing is he's putting uh, his own wife as his daughter, not having any other children, uh, neither son nor, um, nor, uh, nor daughter of his own, apart from her. So she's his heir. She says air now, and that's why yeah. you put your finger on it. That's why he does it. Because the uh, way of, oh, go ahead. Hmm? I was going to say, the other thing about um, to ink and ilk or whatever is it could just be bad grammar. Like, you know, people often get I and me mixed up, or do they not get that? It could be. I mean, God. Or, or could I, guess. I myself, apart from I myself. Could be. I mean, I'm going to quote Gardner here. The language is barbarous. The composition execrable. I mean, in oh, the, great. The, with all <laughs> <laughs> with all the um, indignation go. of a of a first half of the 20th century scholar. <laughs> Are you serious? So I just thought, you know, people get I and me mixed up all the time. It, it, it could be, yeah. Um, Did Gardner really say that it was terrible grammar? Oh, he does. He does. Um, although, yeah. honestly, yeah. There, you go. Th there is also, especially in that generation of scholars, there is a strong bias for Middle Egyptian. And whenever you mess with their beautiful Middle Egyptian, it's like, this is barbarous, this is corrupted, this is not even... And I'm coming yeah. in from Coptic going like, hey, it is not that bad, what are you talking about? But but Ur Inek is weird. You wouldn't say e Anak, e -anak in, in Coptic either. This is... This is kind of well, weird. somebody like me would. And the other thing is, if you see uh, <laughs> grammar as um, somebody like I would, I would, my God, I just did it. Um, if you see grammar as a fixed thing that you're applying, like a mathematician and a formula, if you're like me and you don't understand grammar, then you just like guess. So, you, you know, it's, a, you, so it's, it's not... It's descriptive rather than proscriptive. Right, right, right. Which is why I like Coptic, because it doesn't follow the rules. <laughs> There's something You would it. like medieval Latin, too. It's yeah. like uh, a lot of people complain about it because it, it doesn't follow the rules that are in classical Latin that the authors sometimes fo like, should follow according to like people in the early 20th century. But Yeah, uh, and also yeah. this thing about rules, it's something to do with the scribal elite, isn't it? So you'd have to look at... If you have a scribal elite, so I'm just using a lingo here, then they will do what they do, what they've been taught to do in their grammar schools. If you have a, me a mere wife, perhaps, she's just writing as she hears it, which is not grammatical. Anyway, just saying. We think she wrote this herself? Yeah. This wasn't a professional scribe? I don't know. Sorry, I just oh, thought that. Yeah. I didn't know anything oh. about it. I'm just guessing. That is a, another good question. I mean... yeah. Maybe did, that would explain the grammar if it was self-taught versus. But did she uh, dictate it in her own lingo? I didn't know anything about scribal practices. I was just bullshitting. That <laughs> would be really cool, though. I mean, were scribes this? Would scribes who are professionals make mistakes? Like, you've got a good point there. But if um, it's a will, it's got to have to be somebody, um, you know, scribal. But what's the handwriting like? Is it bad or good? The handwriting, oops, from yeah. as far as I can tell. I mean, this is a typical... pretty clear. Good. Pretty clean. It's good. That's good. Okay, it's just it, the it grammar. Must be a scribe. It must be a scribe then. It can't possibly be a wife. It's I... hard to say, but generally I think the assumption is that the majority of Egyptians weren't literate. There's also about the question of whether he would have written it down as she spoke. Yeah. Now, admit, I don't know yeah. if we actually know this for Egyptian, but at least in Europe at a time when scribes were a thing because the majority of people could not write, part of the scribe's job was to make it sound good and high class and professional and whatever. Like a scribe who 
wrote down the way his client talked, um, assuming that was in some ways, you know, uneducated, then uh, that, that, that would not be considered a very good scribe. Right. I would think the same. But it Greek could have been different. In, I would in strongly Egypt. disagree there, but... Strongly disagree? Why is that? Yeah, having read the letters and events, uh, they are very common and very ordinary. Uh, a lot of people could read and write. Well, it depends a on lot, what a lot of different you're talk yeah. talking about. I'm, all right, maybe I should have clarified this. I'm talking Western Europe, late 18th, early 19th century. That would be would have been a time period when um, a scribe in most countries would have been expected to pretty it up. <laughs> yep. And I mean, we do know that prettying it up, you have these all these scribal exercises, all these form letters that you see young students basically trying to copy, uh, like in Dera Medina, where we have luckily all that trash around where people left like all these exercise, uh, Ostraka and whatnot, that normally would not have survived. And you do see that they copy form letters. So that's definitely an expectation. Then again, is it possible that some people, because not everybody went to a scribe, I, I resist that notion that everything was done by a scribe, uh, just because so many things that people wrote are so banal, like really, like um, like really, best regards from Heliopolis, kiss, 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 essentially. Like, I don't think anybody went to a scribe to send a postcard. I, I just, ugh, I don't believe it. Or oh, that one that we read together where, where uh, this guy is writing to um, uh, his colleague, uh, if I don't get beer, I'm not going to come back to work, basically. Uh, really? Did somebody go to a scribe for that? I, I doubt it. So... Uh, that being said, though, when it comes to a testament, what would you do? Uh, when it comes to a testament, to a will, anything like this, you would go to a professional, right? Because they know the lingo. Mm -hmm. They have the, the 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 power there, essentially, like an, like an attorney to be able to... I mean, to... essentially, we're doing that today, right? right? You don't write your own testament. You, you can not because you... Yes, you, you can. can. You're, you're allowed, but most people don't oh, because you do, don't know. They the... do in England. You go to the news agents and you can buy it and then you just fit it in. But okay. yeah, this is so interesting. Um, Jonathan, this is uncommon was, here. Was John and Jonathan saying that people that there was high literacy of this type of writing? I would say at least there were a lot of people who could read and write. Great, that's exciting. It, well, it, it must have been. It, what time do you mean? In general, we just see that the old uh, old kingdom uh, the scribe who uh, wrote the, um, the ledgers for the moving of the stone to Khufu's pyramid. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, the, log, the log keeping mm -hmm. is, is so basic and, and unnecessary for him to having to do that, but he can do that. But, right. but he was a scribe, right? No, he was a captain. He okay. wasn't a scribe. Oh. oh, that's exciting. So, for example, if you said, I've left my sandals in Thebes, can you send them with my donkey? <laughs> Which, by the way, you actually you do get letters like this. Like, where is the where is the jar of oil that you promised me two months ago? I still haven't gotten it. That kind of stuff. Send me two loincloths. Yeah, I exactly. will send you a donkey. I mean, it's all over the place. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there's a, there's another thing. We're kind of assuming that literacy is a yes or no binary right. switch, but particularly with a writing system like this, literacy is very much a spectrum. You can yeah. like I would not. And leaving aside that I don't know the language well, I would not call myself fully literate in Egyptian because I don't know all the possible signs, all the possible ways you could write something. But basic literacy, I mean, yeah, probably. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, it's really also, clever they are. You know, there's the, I, I always hammer away at this, especially when we're in Horace and Seth, is that I feel like Egyptologists, you know, I love Alan Gardner, but we far too quickly assume that we know better than the person who was writing it at the time. Right. And I <laughs> always think that's a mistake. You know, when we see something and say, well, obviously that's incorrect. Like who the hell are we to say that? Yeah. And this may be like you said, Aurelio, they're thinking of good middle Egyptian grammar, but this is not middle Egyptian. This is but, far, yeah. far later than this. What could have been wrong 500 years ago may be absolutely commonplace and correct now. So I just, I really yeah. hesitate to ever call things a mistake. Okay. Quick question, because I don't know anything about Egyptian. Are you, um, in the middle period you just you lot discuss? Was was there more like scribes, and was it more formal? And then by this stage, 
every Tom, Dick, and Harry can send for their sandals. That's another interesting I think that's question. actually a big discussion, the rates of literacy in Egypt. Wasn't it, uh, Wasn't there a, a talk? Somebody mentioned a talk about this yep. a while ago about literacy rates in, yes. in the Old Kingdom. I think, as far as I know, that is a big topic of discussion, how, how many people would have been literate. I mean, there's there's two things here. You're absolutely right. One is, um, well, which one do I address first? One I would say is sort of like a sampling bias. For the New Kingdom, we have the benefit of having this enormous amount of stuff from from Daryl Medina, but there are other letters, for example, from what's the place called? Ilahun, there's a... Ilahun, Ilahun. The Lahun letters, yeah. 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 Um, the Hekanacht papyri. There's the Hekanacht. Um, I mean, there are more. But those are like the two examples for Middle Egyptian I can think of. Of right, like letters and everyday stuff. I think there's a little bit more. Maybe there are like front reports from one of the the um, the forts. Uh, like we we apprehended a, gro a group of Bedouins and they they were marching this way. Although I forgot from what time exactly that is. Um, but long story short, there are some more letters. The thing is, maybe I, I explain it this way. When I look at what's going on in the New Kingdom, where we have plenty of samples from Daniel Medina. There's a broad spectrum of what people write about. And what they write about during the other time seems on a similar scale from banal to like like uh like high high class, very formal. That makes me think, I mean, this is very this is a very weak argument, but it sort of makes me think um that we're really limited by how much we have in terms of material and not by their literacy, if that makes any sense. Like if this little bit that we have from the early Middle Kingdom looks a lot like the plenty that we have from the New Kingdom. Why am I why am I to, to assume that they would be fundamentally different? It's just that I have a much smaller sample from one. Does that make any sense? Um hmm. makes sense. It's, it's there's also of, potentially a sampling bias towards very formal things in things wrong. in Middle Egyptian because that's the kind of thing that kept being written, like True. say Sinuhe True. got a million sources for it that aren't actually from the Middle Kingdom, but right. because the text in Middle Egyptian, it would have continued being copied in Middle Egyptian. So we've got much larger chance it actually gets to us. Sure. I mean, we have much more for Cicero and Caesar than we have for, for vulgar Latin as well, for the same reason. Um, and then to well, the other part... I just want to say... Go ahead, sorry. Sorry, I just want to say something about the, the question of literacy being not flat, like... Uh, on the binary being sort of a spectrum. Um, I think that's a very interesting topic that was brought up. It is. Um, it is. And it is. Uh, like with, uh, with uh, Cicero, like uh, with like classical, the uh, idea of having a classical standard form of the language, not necessarily Cicero or not necessarily Middle Egyptian or Homer or whatever, but like there's, there's this idea that, yes, you have that and people tend to study that version more than sort of the, uh, the more like a uh, commonplace versions of language people were actually speaking. But then you have things like graffiti and um, uh, everyday documents that really show you how people spoke. And with Latin, there's like, you know, before you have classical Latin, you have some traces of old Latin or sort of in Plautus, which, uh, which is like Roman comedy, which is closer to how people actually spoke. Um, and then you have classical Latin and that kind of becomes the standard. But I think Egyptian seems like it's, it's maybe a similar thing where you have Middle Egyptian and it's, it's continued perpetuated as a standard, but then you have the language of pe everyday people and people who are writing graffiti, they may or may not under, I wonder how, how if there is evidence of ancient Egyptian graffiti before you get to Coptic or Demotic, if that's something and how those spellings would have been for, I know there is Coptic graffiti. I don't know if there's Demotic or earlier versions of Egyptian graffiti, but the other thing I was thinking about is magical spells, where that are not for the elite, so they're not for the fair for the royal family, but they're just someone would commission a scribe to write a little tiny thing, and it um, just to protect them in the afterlife. But that scribe wouldn't have been like the premium version of the scribes; it would have been like a just whoever whoever they can get, afford, basically. And that scribe might have not been a hundred percent literate, but only slightly literate if we're thinking about it as a spectrum, so they would have written some spells the best they could, but the grammar wouldn't be like high class Middle Egyptian classical grammar necessarily. I wonder how much of that might have happened in smaller little more informal sounding documents that are colloquial. That's just really interesting stuff to talk about and try to figure out. 
It is. I mean, I think you have Ostraka and you have um you do have some graffiti uh um in 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 temples and the like, pre-Coptic. Uh so I say Ostraka because obviously if you write it on a on the back of, of a, like a small slab of stone or of pottery, that's not something super formal, not something for eternity, or not like like some prize scroll that you keep in your office, but just something that you're going to give to a boy so he runs over to the next village and gives it to somebody, right? So um, I think you could use that to a degree to check levels of formality and grammar on the point as to how many... I'm not sure if anybody has done that in terms of the um, question of sliding scale, how much could an average person read? This was a really interesting talk. And I think that, uh, E.T., that's what you were talking about. There was a few months mm -hmm. back in, in New York, uh, Victoria Almanza Villatoro. Um, she's also from from Brown, uh, I think, right? Wasn't yep. she? Yeah. She's so. also from, uh, and uh, but what she's done recently is translated Alan's fourth edition into Spanish. Um, so the fourth edition is actually available uh -huh. in Spanish before English, which is kind of funny. But but uh, Alan is still working on the English version, but she essentially uh, translated like the the pre-release. Um, in any case, uh, and she gave this really interesting talk about um, how much could a non-scribe or non-royal, basically somebody, the, a general person, how much would they have been able to pick up just by the um, by the pictorial characters? For from from uh, from inscription. So in other words, I'm thinking it's sort of like in Chinese. Even if you can't read Chinese fluently, there's some characters you always see, like uh, good luck, for example. Uh, that, that that one's going to be in everybody's window and on 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 walls and whatnot. So even if you're illiterate, you're going to pick up that this one means this thing. It means fool, um, and and a few more like this. And the same thing may be going on with Egyptian. That a lot of signs you can just tell what they are because they depict what they what they are um and so some of them the the rebos principle may work so if you have a an inscription that is quote unquote simple enough would you maybe be able to get the gist of it just from figuring it out from the pieces that you can identify and she was looking at that for by looking at a whole bunch of decrees and trying to analyze how much phonetic complements and how much um ideograms were being used and uh, the interesting finding there was that for many inscriptions she looked at you had like two parts one which was more ideograph graphically and one that was like fully fleshed out with all the 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 um um the phonetic complements basically like standard writing and so the thesis there is could one part have been essentially like a like simple english wikipedia so to say you know like for people to look at even if you don't really uh manage the writing system very well it was a really interesting talk uh um yeah, that's as much as i can say about it but i think it is interesting say again interesting thought it's an interesting thought. Um, I think she's onto something there because it is definitely a sliding scale. Uh, I don't think it's really completely like you're completely illiterate or fully literate, but there could be stages in between where you can make out a few things without being able to read like a contiguous, complicated text, certainly not a legal one. Exactly. Just like, me, in... just like me. I mean, speaking as the only kind of non-scholar, non-learning any Egyptian, even though I should have done my homework, I just guess and I recognize certain things and then I actually do it deductively. And even in English, you know, you just, the way you read, you look at something and, well, if you're me, you just guess it. No, that's normal. When you read fluently, you half of what you're actually doing is guesswork. That's why you can easily overlook things like switched around letters. There is, it's been going around the internet, there is this text where all the letters in the words are jumbled. As long as the first and the last are correct, it's very easy as a fluent speaker of the language. You have to, you need high level fluency. Like this is not, this won't work for a language. You speak well, but not exceedingly well. Um, you can easily even overread that all the letters are jumbled. Yeah. I mean, it might, again, it might take you a moment to notice and only, and even once all the letters are jumbled, um, yeah. well, you I mean, might still be able to figure out, um, you can, e you're still able to figure out what it says. Um, E.T., what is interesting is all of you lot are really, really good at languages and you sound like an English speaker, but I know you're not. 
What's fascinating is that, unfortunately, I was an experiment in England a very long time ago, whereby they didn't teach us any Latin grammar. They just tried to enculturate us by looking at Romans going around their daily life. And so we didn't learn any grammar, which was quite hard for me because I was quite academic. And we were kind of taught just to be enculturated. Yeah. So don't do the Cambridge Modern Latin course if you're slightly academically inclined, because it's just so frustrating, <laughs> except that you just learn to guess very well, which is where I've got my language knowledge from, guessing. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I've put I an example of this jumble text if you want to give it a try and yeah. see how, how easy it kind of is to even fully overlook it. I've seen it before. This Let is... me put it up real quick. By the way, guys, we, mm. we are at time. Um, uh, if anybody has to run out immediately, then... Uh, yeah, I've yeah, got to go. Thank, th thank you so much. I'm sorry to be irrelevant, but we're all just trying to distract you from asking us to do any work. <laughs> well, it was an interesting well, conversation and it was an interesting thought did she write it herself or not that's yeah. right I quick question though before we before we part for today um do we want to continue with this one the next time it's going to get a whole yes, lot wilder yes, yes. Uh, i'm really excited yeah, let's try to get yes, through it because i don't know i actually haven't worked out whether she's his daughter or she's his heir i mean i'm Both? just no. all Both. kinds things she's his well, wife and his daughter and his heir right. <laughs> yes exactly that's what i'm excited about and does the grammar right. allow him to be allow her to be everything she's yeah. his sister she's his mother she's his sister oh, she's okay. exactly it, it, this it, is get, it gets wild but only for tax purposes <laughs> for tax pur <laughs> that's true. Well, only legally for tax purposes yeah i didn't want to make it weird <laughs> it's not weird it's just legal but wasn't it all weird in those days Everything's always weird when it comes to that sort of thing. To say, I think everything's always Your weird. Your conversation is going off the rails at this point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. You can cut this bit. <laughs> All right, guys. No, I'm not going. I'm certainly not going. To. But let's continue then. There in, in two weeks, and in between, there's going to be completely normal horrors and says because there's nothing weird going on over there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> there guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's all completely normal. Bye. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>